raid one nori here everybody and welcome back to a new video wait can you go down please can you not judge me for the rest of the video please we need to stay focused my brothers we need to stay focused because we have a video to make can we ignore this haircut please i know that my haircut is bad but do you know what's good the two announcements that i'm going to make on this video and in today's video, I will show you the three uses of the tree filter on Photoshop. But before we do that, let's start with the first announcement. Join our Discord server, where you can communicate with other artists, share your opinions, advices, tips, and tricks, and get to know each other. Participate in contents, get a chance to win cash prizes, stock images, and more. Share your artworks with the community, see how they react, get feedback, and better yet, me and Abby will join you in the voice channels. I've been using Photoshop for almost 15 years. If, is, do I, is, if, is, the link is going to be down in the description. I will show you how to add these trees spotlights, also these leaves and the branches, using the tree option from the render on the filter menu. So this is before and this is after. First step is to add a new empty layer, then go to the filter menu, click on the render option, then click on tree. And this tree menu will show on your screen. Here we don't need the presets, we will choose the basic as a start. For the base of the tree type, first let me reset everything. Now for the base tree type, we will not need this option because this is for the tree type or the tree shape. And we only need the leaves shapes. So for the light direction, we will need to set that at zero. We will do the same for the branches height and the branches thickness because we will not need all of the branches. We only need the leaves amount and the leaves size. And as the option says this for the leaves amount, how many leaves that you want in the single render. And for the leaves size, it will control how big or small the leaves is going to be. For me, I will scale that more a little bit. What I want to achieve here is a big size leaves and I want them to be separated from the each other. So I will try multiple times until I get what I want. I will keep clicking on the randomize shapes right here. That will give me uh, random results or random uh, previews until I get something like that, which we will go for. Now, for the default leaves right here, we will uncheck this and we will choose the leaves type. For me, I went for the option number two right here, which is these leaves right here that matches with the trees. Then I will click OK. Photoshop will render this result that we got and put it on the middle of the screen. Now, for the next step, I will choose a position for that tree leaves, which is going to be right here. So I will click on Ctrl plus T, then I will flip it on the horizon line because I need these shapes right here. And I will put it right there. Next, while clicking on the layer of the leaves right here, I will name it leaves. I will go to layer, then I will click on layer mask, and then I will click from transparency. That will create a mask from the shape of the leaves right here. Then I will add a curves adjustment layer. Then I will click and hold Alt. Then I will drag the mask of the leaves to the curves adjustment layer that we created. Click yes on replace layer mask. Then I will hide. Then I will. No, I, I promise, like, and... Then I will hide the leaves layer. Click on the curves adjustment layer. Then add exposure or add brightness by taking this point and slide it to the left side. Click on the Curves Adjustment Layer Mask, then add Featherness, just a bit. Now duplicate the Curves Adjustment Layer by clicking and holding Alt, then dragging that layer to the top. Reset the position of that point, then go to the red channel and add just a bit of the color red. Now click on the Move tool, then click on the mask of that Curves Adjustment Layer and then click on the arrow keys 
to change the position of that layer mask I will take it to the left side just a bit and this is before this is after as you can see what I'm trying to achieve by that step is to add that red bounce light on the rocks this is before and this is after make sure the duplicated curves adjustment layer is at the bottom now select both curves adjustment layers then click on Control G to add them in one group Add a mask to that group, click on that mask, then go to filter, render, and add clouds. Now disconnect the group from the layer mask by clicking on that icon right here. Then click on Ctrl T to control the layer mask. I want the clouds to be descaled just like that. Now click on that layer mask, then click on Ctrl M for the curves menu. Add contrast by taking that point to the right side just a bit and that point to the left side then add one point on the middle on the midtones and take it down then click ok select the brush tool choose the black color and paint on the areas that you don't want the spotlights to appear on and just like that this is how I add the bright spots from the trees the gothic theme content brought to you by photomanipulation.com started on November 12 and ends in and will end in January 12. If you don't know what the word gothic means, the gothic style was present on the medieval era. So what you need to do is make a scene where the gothic fashion is appeared on the clothes, the architectures, you know that tall pointing buildings. Be creative with it. Make it as dramatic as it can be. The rules are simple. The rule number one, use one or more of the materials that are provided by the photomanipulation.com. The link is going to be down in the description. Rule number two, do not use AI generated image. However, you can use the generative fill on your artwork, but we might ask you to give us the BSD file just in case. Number three, submit your artwork before January. <laughs> Rule number three, submit your artwork before January 12. You can submit one or more entries. The winners are going to be revealed on the January 15th. The other information that you need to know about are going to be down in the description. And without any further ado, let's continue with our tutorial. This technique is definitely better than the first one that I covered in the first video on this series now i will show you how to add the tree leaves and the branches make sure to create a new document and make sure to give it a big size let's say 6000 by 6000 and then click on create delete the background layer make sure you add a transparency layer because we need a transparent background then go to filter render and click on tree and the tree menu will show for the preset you can choose the presets that you can download from the internet or you make your own presets i will show you how in a minute we will need the basic tab for the base tree type you will choose the tree that you want to add the branches to here you have the types of the trees that you can choose from and here on the light direction for the light direction, you want to match the light direction of the tree menu with the light direction of your artwork. To do that, zero is being the left side, so the light direction is coming from the left side. 90 is going to be right at the top, so this is the degrees. 90 is going to be right at the top, and 180 is going to be from the right side. For the leaves amount, we covered that. For the leaves size we covered that for the branches height the more you increase the number the branch is going to be appeared on the top of the main branch for the branch for the branches thickness i mean for the branches thickness the title or the for the branches thickness the oh options God, English mother do you speak it? for the branches thickness the option explains itself the more you increase the number, the thickest the branches will appear. For me, I have already made the preset, which is this one that's right here, that matches with the trees that I created. 
I will just increase the number of the branches height just a bit. If you change the options right here, you can always save that as a preset by clicking on that menu right here or that option. Then click on save preset. You can give it whatever name that you want and then click on save. And then you can always use it later. So I will click OK for now. Then I will click Control A to select the canvas, then Control C to copy. Then I will go back to my artwork and paste it. Turn it to Smart Object or convert it to Smart Object. Decrease the scale of it and choose a place for it on your artwork. You can also use the Puppet Warp tool to twist the branches by adding a point, then clicking and holding Alt, and then rotating that point right here. Just like that. And then you can later go through the process of matching the color and the lighting. Sometimes when you have a background like this, and you want to add a shadow of the leaves of the trees, add a new layer and go and do the same steps as, as we did before with the artwork. And then we take that render and fix it or match it with the perspective. And then I will crop it so we don't have a big size file. Then I go to layer, layer mask from transparency, and I will add a curves adjustment layer, and I will apply the same mask to it. And let's take this down just a bit and take this to the right side. And as I said before, we make a new copy of it and reset it to its defaults. Then I go to the red channel and I add the color red. Let's add a featherness to, the, to both masks. For the curves mask that is affecting the color, what I'm going to do is I will click on control and hold it, click on the mask. And then I will click on delete so it's only visible on the edges. I will add a warm color to it by adding a color lockup. Then I will choose crisp winter. I will set it to color and decrease the opacity of it. Click two times on that curves mask or curves layer. Then I will take this slide and bring it to the left side. But not too much, just like that. To make it just a bit real, we add a hue and saturation adjustment layer, apply the same mask to it, and we add lightness, just a bit of lightness because it was too dark. We don't want that. That is a realistic result. So, this is how you add the shadow. This is it for today's tutorial. I hope you got value. I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, show me that by clicking on the like button, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to see more advanced tips and tricks, full length tutorials, make sure to grab my digital landscape reloaded course. The link is going to be down in the description. And without any further ado, I will see you in the next tutorial. Peace.